to open the logic and see what's happening you could do right click and open instruction logic and make sure the context is set to the conveyance instance and you could see right now since we since the machine hello welcome back to ready controls in this video we're going to talk about add-on instruction sets in studio 5000 for rockwell plcs add-on instruction sets are useful when you have a commonly used function that you want to use it again and again they have several advantages as listed here the first advantage is reusability of the code for consistency and modularity you could use the same code between multiple processes or multiple programs like uh, calculating volume of a cylinder or calculating or doing a start stop command for a motor or two position cylinder control and it also provides a easy to use interface just like any other instruction add-on instruction set will give you visibility of what's happening to the instruction and it also gives an ability to document how the pattern instruction works that way it reduces the document development time and it uh, another advantage is you uh, ability to import and export into another project you could export into another project using PyX extension or you could copy paste between projects another advantage is ability to track the revisions you can add instruction signature to your add-on instruction set which generates a unique identifier and prevents instruction being edited without resulting in a change of the signature and it also simplify maintenance your code maintenance uh, will be simplified because add-on instruction sets can be monitored in logics designer application and it will also animate the tag values related to the specific instance of the add-on instruction set. So that's the advantages of add-on instruction set. And next we're going to talk about some key concepts that we'll be using in uh, for add-on instruction set. Uh, one of the concept is the concept of argument. Argument is assigned to a parameter of a add-on instruction set. And this argument contains specification of how the data is used by the instruction in a user program and an argument can be a simple tag like a temperature 2 is a tag or it could be a literal value like a 100 or 165 as a value or argument could be a tag structure reference like a user defined tags like motor.start or motor.run or it could be a direct array reference to a position this is a position array and it's 13th element of that array you could do a direct array or you could do an indirect array referencing where you can take position is an array and then index plus one uh, instead of directly the direct array reference or you could use a combination of indirect and direct which is uh, if position is an array you could do index and then index plus one and then a child element of that array index typically we use a simple tag at the time we just use a simple tag other important thing is this is arguments and how are the arguments passed to the add-on instruction set arguments can be passed by reference or by value when we say by reference that means when we pass an argument using a reference tag that means that tag the tag is available for external code which is not the add-on instruction set to be able to be changed that means that hmi can alter the value of that tag even before aoi can use that so you need to be careful when you use pass by reference pass by value is nothing but you just pass the value and add on instruction set will take that value and act upon it the advantage of passing by value is that the original value remains unchanged providing isolation so if you need isolation you don't want anybody else to change the value other than your add-on instruction set then we use pass by value if not we use pass by reference and within parameters there are input parameters in out parameters and out parameters simply input input parameters are parameters which act as an input to the add-on instruction set and they are passed by value that means they cannot be changed from external sources during the execution of an add-on instruction set output parameters are the parameters that are passed by value as an uh, uh, passed by value and they are immutable that means they cannot be changed from external store sources during execution of an add-on instruction set in out parameters these are parameters passed by reference and these are changeable from external sources during execution of an add-on instruction set so those are the three parameters input output and their main characteristics and differences 
And next, we're just going to summarize what we learned about add-on instruction set. So imagine this is an add-on instruction set. It takes input parameters. It has output parameters. Input parameters are passed by value and they will not change during execution of the AOI. And output parameters, they are passed by value and will not change during execution of the AOI. And in out parameters, these are passed by reference and they will change during execution of add-on instruction set. Since the input parameter and output parameters are passed by value, they are slower and they take more memory to execute. And add-on instruction set logic, that's part of the code. An add-on instruction set can always have some local memory tags that are only present for the add-on instruction set and they cannot, they cannot be used outside of add-on instruction set. So that's the overview of add-on instruction set. And in the next video, we're going to talk about how to use an add-on instruction set, how to program one, and how do we use it for commonly used code. So to create an add-on instruction set, you go into your controller organization and right click, click new add-on instruction set. Uh, in this, uh, for this add-on instruction set, we will do something for a motor, uh, motor control logic, and we'll call it for run command of a motor. And this is the major version min and you could write extended text here uh, and you could take revision notes this and you could click this open routine and open definition it will open up two windows and it opened up two windows this is the logic portion of it this is the add-on instruction set if uh, you can see add-on instruction set right now it's uh, four bytes of size and these are all the parameters we talked about those are input parameters the parameter can be an input output or an in out local tags these are the tags specific to the inside the add-on instruction set if you want them to be local specific to the in instruction set you could use them scan modes you can use this to configure how you want it how the add-on instruction set to work during pre-scan, post-scan and other mode signature. This is where you generate the signature. If you click it, it will generate it, but it will seal the logic in. Since we have not yet completed, we will not generate this, but you generate once you create the logic, test it, and uh, then you could create a signature. Change history, this is where you could write all the change history. Help is where all your help review will show up. It just right now showing motor control logic but as we develop more uh, it will give a list of all the required parameters signature timestamp and all that so we'll go ahead and uh, develop the logic for the motor control so just from a basic simple exercise we'll just do a start stop circuit of this one so we will do a start push button and a stop push button and then we will use a, a run command uh, to run the motor i right? just keep keeping it simple so we just call this as a start pb start push button and right click we call it as a new parameter as an input parameter and it's a bool and we want it to be visible so we call it visible required is when you want it to be hardwired to a physical input you could use required but for now we'll just leave it uh, visible that way we can map it from a hmi or any other bit so we just leave it visible and we hit ok and say this is our another parameter which is an input parameter which is a stop push button and we want it to be visible and it's input it's a bool and a base tag then once we already have the run command so we'll call this as a run command and you could add a delay timer if you want uh, but let's uh, call this as a run command and run command will work as an output parameter so we just call it as an out parameter and we call it make it visible so to seal in the stop push button we will go ahead and create a seal in bit and use the run command bit to seal it so this is a simple start or stop you could add a auto manual button so we could call um, a auto push button auto we could make it an auto mode we can call it as a new parameter as input auto and we could add a condition what to do uh, when it's in manual we can just do one more condition we if i'm in auto we go to the run command but if we are in a manual mode that means when not in auto mode we want to use a jog push button so we'll just use a jog underscore pb and make that one as a parameter for input and we call it and we can make it visible or go ahead and make it visible so basic circuit here it's a start and 
this is auto mode and manual mode and we can add more interlocks to it we can add a process interlock we can just call it as a, any process or a quality interlock we can just call it a process interlock it would be a parameter it would be an input so is equal to one is everything okay and we can call it and then we can also add all safety is okay we can just call it safety and let that be a input means safety circuit is okay so that's our basic run command and uh, we could add more logic and create some alarms so let's say since i don't have any feedback from the field we'll just use not running whenever we don't have a run command we'll generate a simple alarm and this alarm will be a out condition that way we can use it to trigger hmi alarm then we want to make it visible say okay and since we have an alarm we we need to create when a acknowledge button is so we call it ac push button we make that as an input parameter and then we create a coil to say acknowledged and we make that a new parameter and we will make it a output parameter we make it big so we can see it so all we created is once we have a, a acknowledge bit and once the acknowledge push button is pressed we have a uh, bit called a law acknowledged and we will go ahead and we can just run a command and once the acknowledge push button is pushed we acknowledge the alarm calling it as it's acknowledged and then we seal it and when it's agged this one and it's when it's acknowledged and when it's acknowledged so basic logic here if it's not running we'll have an alarm so we create a basic alarm like this where you have a run command and when you push an alarm acknowledge button we will make the bit called acknowledged and once it's acknowledged we will kill the alarm okay basic condition ba basic logic here nothing uh, fancy so that's how we created our instruction set and you could see all the tags we created you could see them under motor control definition these are all the input tags and output tags which we created okay now the add-on instruction set is created now we'll figure out how to use it in the logic so we'll go ahead and uh, save the file and now if we go back and look at add-on instruction set and properties and go into the help it created a faceplate where it's showing all the tags which we marked as visible the run command alarm and the motor control push buttons and all of them and it gives you a basic description of what it is and the, you can add more extended text here uh, this is more information apply so now we'll go ahead and uh, try to use it so to use it you could insert it uh, from your add-on instruction set here or you could just press the insert key on your keyboard and you could just start motor control and it will show up either way so we we'll remove that one so now this is just like any other timer instruction or a CTD. You just need to give it a name for that instance. So we just call it a conveyor motor one and right click create new conveyor motor one. Leave everything as default. It's already knows it's an add on instruction set. So it made a motor control. So we go ahead and create and immediately when you created it, if you go look at the monitor properties on conveyor m1 it created all the tags we need for making the add-on instruction work the start button and the stop button and run commands so we created it now we just need to map some inputs to it right we need to map a input button we need to map an output push button so i have already created all that so i'll just copy paste from my previous files all the mapping which i have done so we just will see so all we are doing is we're just mapping a start pb create and here for the acknowledge we'll go ahead and since now we already have the add-on instruction set and we call it conveyance m1 we could say dot acknowledge push button that's our add push button and for stop push button we create a tag new stop pb and for reset command this is from the previous logic we don't have any uh, reset so we'll remove that auto mode we already have an auto mode so we go ahead and conveyance one dot auto mode safety are okay so we go ahead and say conveyance in one dot safety we wipe that one and safety relay is a mem memory tag so we'll just create one and start push button we wire it to the conveyance underscore in one dot start command start pb that's it so we mapped all the add-on instruction set now we'll go ahead and download this and see 
what happens so we'll go ahead and uh, first save it logic go ahead and verify they know it's verifying the controller there are zero instruction uh, zero errors and zero warnings that's two messages so everything came out great and zero errors and zero warning so this is a good thing for you to do before you proceed to download is to verify the controller and you can do that here on the logic verify controller it will verify the controller and you can verify the routine same thing but do the controller and you would be good so now we'll go ahead and uh, find the plc and download we go ahead and download the program and back to remote run now you can see the we already have an alarm because if you go ahead and to open the logic and see what's happening you could do right click and open instruction logic and make sure the context is set to the conveyance instance and you could see right now since the machine is not running since we don't have the run command we have an alarm which is happening so we'll go ahead and uh, give it a start push button by pushing a button we have a start button and let's see what else is waiting we have safeties are still not okay so we go ahead and this is live as you can see if you are in that constant you in that instance you could see what's happening so this is how you troubleshoot when you open a aoi if you open the definition it would all be gray and no green bars coming up but if you open up the instance then you will see the live animation of the instance so we need to get, just give it safety so this is a memory tag so i'll go ahead and toggle that now if i go back to auto mode now we are waiting on a start push button so we'll go ahead and push a start button and we have a run command and the motor is running and you could see that here on the display and we could always use the output side of that aoi which is conveyance underscore m1 right so if i go ahead and uh, put uh, conveyance underscore m1 dot run command and you could turn on a light on your plc and have a local light for the display saying like hey the motor is running so that's it. Uh, that's how you use a add-on instruction set. You program an add-on instruction set and that's how you use it. So for more, please let me know how you like this video. Please uh, like and subscribe to get more content like this. Thank you.